Right, this is your computing to, um, lesson for today. And what, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at, when we search on the internet, we're going to be searching effectively. And I'd like you to learn how to visit specific sites and extract information to answer questions. And I'd like you to think about the website that you're using for your research. Because being a discerning um, user of the internet means you don't just believe everything you read. People make websites, okay? People are fallible, people make mistakes. I've made loads of mistakes on these topics and, and videos lately, I know. But, you know, you have to realise that people do make mistakes. And also, I mean, there are people out there who like to trick you anyway. But the best way for us to do is do it is to is to check the information on one or two websites because um, then you know that if three if two websites agree, it's probably going to be the right answer, isn't it? Um, if you if you find just one opinion, it may be just that an opinion. Um, I could set up a web page right now that tells you all about the fact that Winston Churchill was a um, greengrocer from um, Brixton who who liked to um, play a saxophone on a Monday. And I could do that. I could put that website up. But that wouldn't be true, would it? But um, there's not many, many people like that who would do that to you. But you've got to check your information just in case there are wrong um, facts put on the internet by somebody who would made a genuine mistake. So always, always, always when you're researching, think, is this a really good website to be looking at? Or um, maybe I need to check this information on another website. OK, so that's basically what we're doing today. So um, we're going to be evaluating our, our information found on the World Wide Web. And you've got to realise, as I've already said, it's made by a person. So just a quick revision. What do we use the Internet for? This was in our last lesson, wasn't it? We talked about how all the many, many ways we use the Internet. Um, information sharing, um, research, communication, controlling things. Um, there are many, many, many ways that we use the internet and it is a marvellous, marvellous thing. I don't know what I'd do without it. So we've got to really be appreciative of the internet and we've got to make sure that we use it really responsibly and make sure we're using it right, okay? What I want to do is I'd like you to do a little searching task for me, okay? So um, I've got some questions here and they are very simple questions, but I really want you to check that you've got it right and spelled it right by going on to a search engine. So it could be Kidrex, Google, Firefox, all the different search engines. You choose which is right for you in your house and search the answers to these questions. So there's a flag there. Which flag does this country belong to? And so where are you going to find that answer? Are you going to look at um, um, dogs? in Alaska to find that answer. No, you've got to think of, well, how am I going to search for that flag? You might know it already, but you might think, oh, I could do a search for um, images of flags. And then it might come up, then you can click on it, and that will take, tell you which flag it is. Um, there are, there's some more questions there. What's the capital of Australia? That's not a difficult one to do, is it? Because you can search for something simple like, what is the capital of Australia? And that should tell you the right answer. Um, you might want to check it in two places just in case somebody has put something daft because lots of people get it wrong. And there are other questions on there that you can look up by just typing the right sort of question into a search engine. OK, remember, if you're looking for the capital of Italy, you're not going to type in pepper, are you? No, I'm being silly now, but you'd be surprised what people search for and expect the answer to pop up for them. So have a go at those. You'll notice that when you put your answers, the, the boxes have the right number of uh, um, spaces for the letters of the answer, OK? And then the yellow boxes, round and about, if you collect those letters and then mix them around a bit, you can put them into the centre boxes. There are 12 boxes there and it spells out something. Now, you might think, what? Oh, I can't get that. And they're not in order. I've made it really difficult. Um, so it's, it, they, those yellow boxes, the letters in them spell out a little something that's to do with what you're doing today. So let's see if you can if you can do that little task. 
So you're going to have to um, use the tabs at the top of the page. We talked about tabs, didn't we, a couple of lessons ago, to flip between um, your search engine and your video, Sway video today. So you can do a bit of research, do a bit of writing down, write your answers down, and then when you finish, come back and have a look back and forth, back and forth, using your tabs and um, answer these questions. When you have, use the yellow boxes to fill in the um, little anagram in the middle, which is something to do with this now, and you're going to need to pause the video to do that task. OK, good luck. Pause the video now and when you're ready, move on. OK, so our answers are the flag was from Spain. The fastest land animal is a cheetah. The capital of Australia is a can is Canberra. The wonders of the ancient world, there were seven. The capital of Italy, obviously Rome. Capital of Spain, Madrid. A spider has eight legs. And the pyramids are in Egypt. Now, if you took those letters, they would spell out search engine. I hope some of you got that. I hope it wasn't too tricky. Um, it's not easy doing anagrams, is it? But that's what I put in there, search engine. So that is your task number one finished. So let's move on to the next task. So here's the searching task um, for you. This is my example of what I want you to do. I've asked you some questions on the following slides. The first question is, how tall is Blackpool Tower? Now, what I would like you to do is find the answer by looking at a relevant website. OK, now you can see that the website I used to find this answer was actually um, tourist information about Blackpool Town. Um, so there we go. That's going to be likely to be right. It's going to be reliable sort of um, website to look at. Excuse me. But um, you might find a better website than that. And what I've done is I've got a little picture of Blackpool Town and popped it in there. And... Um, I've made sure that I've thought about, is it a reliable question? Does it have any bias? Is it a bias thing? Um, is there a copyright on the picture? Be careful. Don't go copying things that don't have that have a copyright on because you're not supposed to. It belongs to somebody else. So check for free images of um, Blackpool Tower before you pop one in there. So on the next two slides, you've got to have some questions. I'd like you to see if you can do it in a Word document because you can't copy and paste um, pictures from the internet free images remember you can't copy them um, and paste them onto something in your book so it's nice to actually have a word document up if you can't do a word document don't worry about it just do the answer and the web address that you used okay be discerning don't just use any old website just look for one that you think oh that's going to be reliable so if I'm finding out about Blackpool Tower then the Blackpool in tourist information is probably going to be a really good website to look at um, if I'm searching for paper, a fact about paper, the National Paper Society might have some really good ideas about what you want for paper. So in a Word document, if you can make a chart um, with some columns in to get the answer, the image and a web address, that'd be fantastic. If you can't, do it in your book, put the uh, answer, could draw a little image if you wanted to, and then put the web address that you used. OK, so here is your second slide. Your next question. So. Which is the longest river in the world? I'd like you to see if you can find the answer to that. Check it. Check it. And remember, when you look at the web address, when you look on your search engine, which one of those many, many, many results are you going to click on that's reliable? OK. Um, just have a little search and, and have a check of two websites just in case one of them might be wrong. But then look at the look at the validity of it. Is it is it going to is it the um, longest river? Is it rivers of the world? National Geographic. That's going to be pretty pretty reliable, isn't it? So think about the website you're looking at to find the answer. And then if you can put a, a right click an image, just check it's a free image. You can always go into images and put free images of longest river in the world or whichever it is one one that you found out and pop it into your Word document if you can. If you can't, you could just draw something. The third question is, who painted the Mona Lisa? Again, we're looking for an answer. We'd like to have a web address of a reliable web page for that, please. And then an image if you can, if you're working on Word, if you're working in your book, don't worry. You could have a go at drawing a picture of the Mona Lisa. 
that'd be really cool, wouldn't it? Then you've got two more questions here. Who wrote the book Mortal Engines? See if you can find that answer and a reliable website address in there, please. And where is Ayers Rock? You can find the answer to that and we'll have an image and a reliable website address for that. Now, there are three more questions here. How high is Mount Everest? How long did Queen Victoria reign for? And which country features a maple leaf on its flag? That's a little bit harder, but I'm sure you'll find it. So, guys, you can go backwards and forwards. I, I can flick back here, but you can actually rewind the video to look again at these questions. If you want to pause the screen so you get it right and sort it out, that's fine. And when you get to the end of all of those eight questions, you should have finished. So, pause the video. Go back, look again, and I hope that you make sure that you are actually fulfilling these objectives, that you are understanding that the information on the web page is created by a person and they can be fallible, so you need to check your information. And you need to evaluate the different types of information found on the World Wide Web. You need to use a reliable and sensible site to resource that information from. OK, well done for that today. And um, I hope you enjoy it. If you want to go off on a little tangent and research other things, you can do. But always remember, always keep it at the back of your mind. Who wrote this? Who wrote this page? Why were they writing it? And can I trust the information? OK, so good luck with that. That's the end of your lesson.